Minnesota, together. This is KIMT News 3 at 5. Good evening. We are coming to you live from the Surf Ballroom, where, as you can tell, we're dressing the part, and we are taking part in everything the Winter Dance Party has to offer. That's right. We'll be talking to singer Chris Montez and getting an inside look at the Surf Museum that is coming right up. And we'll head back to the Surf Ballroom and check back in with Matt and Sarah in just a few minutes. But first tonight, well, we're rocking North Iowa tonight as the Winter Dance Party really gets going at the Surf Ballroom. KIMT News 3's Sarah Danik and Matt Bradley have been diving right into it all and are live in Clear Lake for us at the 36th Annual Winter Dance Party. Yeah, that's right, Amy. Of course, the Winter Dance Party weekend is all about the music, but every day the surf offers a museum with some really amazing things. I want to point out a couple things here. We have a handwritten letter from Buddy Holly to his parents, also a letter from Elvis Presley to the Big Boppers family expressing condolences. It's things like that that bring people to this venue all year. I had no idea that song, uh, Goodbye American Pie, what that really was about. Bruce Larson isn't who you'd expect to find at an event honoring the Big Bopper, Richie Valens, and Buddy Holly. In fact, he freely admits he's more into country music than old-time rock and roll, but the surf ballroom and its museum have already won him over. I wasn't real familiar with uh, Buddy Holly's story, and uh, the more I checked into it, the more interested I became. He and his family are here from Nebraska for the entire weekend on the recommendation of a friend. They're getting into the spirit. Of course, dyed my hair. <laughs> and surrounding themselves with the history on display. The volume and uh, the accuracy of it that's just, uh, you know, able to read the old newspaper articles, see the pictures, the autographs of the shows and the, the people that have been here is just impressive. A person could spend hours here and not see it all. This weekend, though, the focus is on the music that gives these museum pieces their value. You know, I don't think there's much real old-style rock and roll anymore, but it needs to be uh, maintained as a tradition and as a history aspect. And Bruce tells me he will absolutely be making his way to the memorial site where that musician's plane crashed 56 years ago now. And you're going to be giving everyone a tour of that. Yeah, I actually uh, went there uh, recently and was able to see it. It was my first time there after living here for a while, so it's uh, definitely worth going there. A lot to look at uh, at that site and reflect on. Uh, but before we get to that, that'll be coming up at 6. I actually got a, a chance to talk to uh, singer Chris Montaz uh, earlier today, and he told me why, why it's so special to uh, play here at the surf. All right, well, thank you so much uh, for joining me today, Chris. So I have to ask you, what does it feel like to, to walk in here? You've been to the surf before, you've performed here, but what does it feel like to be here for this event? Well, I'm honored because I'm going to be the MC. You know, I've worked with some of these, some of these groups, and I, got, I, I was entitled to uh, work with people that I've never seen on before, you know, I've heard on radio. And uh, in, in the uh, ambience here at, this, at the surf ballroom, it's, it just takes you back in time. It's interesting, because I was telling some of the people here, and... and uh, it's great feel, great feeling. Now, uh, what kind of influence did people like Richie Valens have on your music uh, later on? Oh, okay. Uh, I I became a singer because I wanted to be like Richie Valens, sing the kind of style, and him be Mexican American. That's what I. And I, I remember playing at this little hop where I live out, in, which which was in Hawthorne, California, at one time. And it was like 200 people there, and I'm standing, and they said Richie Valens will be out in a few minutes, and I'm, I'm waiting. And I was, I just had this feeling to say that at least I was there to hear him sing Don and La Bamba, right? So I'm standing there and I all of a sudden way at the back of the stage, I mean, the back of the group, and I'm turning to my right and Richie Valens is standing next to me, of all places. And I think he was God sent, you know, he told me, here's you, you want to meet your idol? There he is. <laughs> But you've also gotten to meet some pretty incredible people. The Beatles actually opened for you at one point. Oh, the who? <laughs> yeah, I remember first I had a big song going in England, which Let's Dance, and I met this group, and um, we became good friends, and they were coming up. They had a song called Love Me Do at the time, and um, it just turned out great, you know, and, and then it became so crazy that everywhere we got, we went. We got mobbed, and it was like, it was it was a great feeling, and it's great to have a lot of girlfriends. But <laughs> after a while, it gets old, I guess you know. But I, I wouldn't change my life for that. I'm, I'm glad that I'm here at this level. I mean, it's great to be famous and this and that, but not when people have you in a cage. And uh, anything that you're really looking forward to over this weekend? Oh, just to 
to enjoy myself with the people and, and do my set and uh, and meet my friends, you know. Well, thanks so much for joining us at tonight and best of luck this weekend. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Chris was great, so it was an honor to, to interview him and a lot of fun with him. Uh, we'll have much more for, from other headliners who are here tonight as well coming up. A lot of characters here this yeah. weekend. We'll see you back here live at the Surf Ballroom a little bit later in the show. All right, thank you very much, Matt and Sarah. It seems this musical tradition has often met with some nasty winter weather, high winds, heavy snowfall in past years, but tonight the weather is better than it could be. Welcome back to the Surf Ballroom. And as you've been seeing throughout the show, we are surrounded by all kinds of great uh, music memorabilia, but this isn't the only place to go to, to see some incredible items. No, not at all. There are outreach efforts throughout North Iowa. We showed you some kids getting in the act yesterday. And also there's a, split, a spot for memorabilia lovers and vendors from all over the country. It's at the Best Western in Clear Lake and it's called the Rockin' and Boppin' Record Show. 31 vendors, hundreds of types of memorabilia and tens of thousands of records. One thing you'll definitely want to make sure to look out for, unsold tickets from the very first winter dance party. It was then known as the Buddy Holly Memorial Concert in 1979. Those are going for a cool 300 bucks. So we've been finding that a lot of the people who are there and a lot of the people who are collecting in general and some of the artists themselves have been deciding, you know, I'd really like to have a piece of, of history of the, of the Clear Lake venue. And nothing says it like the original ticket. And of course, there is anything you can imagine related to Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, the Big Bopper. But the organizer of the, of the record show says this event has grown and now features music, books, comics, and a lot more. Pretty much anything celebrating music, pop culture from the past century. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get my Buddy Holly glasses yeah, back ready. on and get back to the party. Yeah, I love <laughs> it. Well, we have much more to bring you at 6. I, uh, I have to tell you, you're going to get a, a look at Matt's dancing skills. And, and they're good. Sarah's. Yes. We'll see you then. Now we're taking a break for a little fun at the Surf Ballroom in Clear Lake. The 36th annual Winter Dance Party is underway, and that's where we find Matt Bradley and Sarah Danik. How's the night going so far? It looks like you're having a lot of fun. Well, I think we can, uh, I can speak for Sarah when uh, I yeah. say that we're both having a fantastic <laughs> time today. It's been a very fun day, yep. very long day. You'll see what we were doing early this morning in a little bit. You don't yep. want to miss that. Yep, it's a yep, fantastic day. Plenty of uh, things going on outside of uh, the surf ballroom as well. Now, it's kind of been described as a reunion of sorts. A lot of people are mentioning that when they talk about uh, the, the winter dance party. But there's also a serious side to this event. We can't forget what happened in the early morning hours of February 3rd, 1959. Uh, so a visit to the crash site is definitely a must. Uh, earlier, uh, actually yesterday, Jeff Nicholas of Clear Lake, who owns the property, took me out to show me around and took me to that memorial site. Yeah, and they had and their family uh, was, had had a tile business, so he, they all thought he was gonna, Buddy was going to go into the tile business with the family, but he decided he had other things he wanted to do. One of the big questions that people would come out here and not where, know where it was, oh, know, yeah. know where the memorial site was. So I decided that that would be a good marking point. You put those black glasses up anywhere in the world and people know just exactly what it is. People from all over the country and all over the world visit this spot because, you know, really this is where the music died. I mean, the music didn't die at the surf, it didn't die at the airport, this is where the music died. But of course, we always, when we say that, the music didn't die, the music never died. And it, it really found a rebirth at the surf ballroom. And with all the fans that come from all over the country and all over the world, the music's never going to die. We also have been criticized that we haven't done more out here. And I guess our, our position kind of is, you know, I suppose we could put lights, some neon lights and a spotlight and flashing lights out here and, and say, hey, this is where it is. But the guys were simple. It takes you know, away from some, something. Right. You know, most of Buddy's songs were three chords, A, D, and E. The guys threw up a couple of, of amplifiers on the stage and, and played. Yeah. And, and it was a simpler time. And, mm -hmm. and really, I think that, that Ken Paquette uh, memorial here is very appropriate and so we've always just kind of left it the way it is. That crash site is located uh, just north of the surf ballroom on 315th and Gulf Avenue.
Avenue if you want to check that out. As you saw, those uh, the Buddy Holly glasses do mark, mark the trail, so uh, it, it is a little easier to find with that. And there are actually uh, tours going out 10 a.m. on Saturday, so you can take a cozy ride on a bus out there, so that might be nice. <laughs> a bit of a chilly day. Uh, yeah. We've been learning a lot over the years about the victims of that crash. Earlier today, I was able to meet up with Richie Valen's sister, Connie, to see what this event means to her. Connie Valance, thank you very much for joining us today. Here we are at the Surf Ballroom in front of this incredible display honoring your brother. And all these years later, as a family member, what's it like to have all of this hullabaloo made over him? Well, I think um, it's amazing that 56 years later, people still remember. You know, how many artists can say today that at 17, with an eight month career, 56 years later, we're still playing their music? It is incredible. What do you think it is that makes it stand the test of time so well? You know, it was time of innocence. Um, the 50s was awesome, 60s. And people like to go back and remember those times. Sometimes the world isn't so pleasant nowadays. And you can step back, even if it's just for a weekend, winter dance party weekend. Exactly. People really do seem to go back in time this weekend. And <laughs> Exactly, and relive some of the innocents. And yes. I, I am uh, told now that Iowa has really gotten into your blood so much that you're becoming a, or you have become a permanent resident. I have, as of June of this year, I bought my my, my home in the Okaboji area, and um, you know visited um, Okaboji back in '07 when Richie was inducted into Iowa Rock and Roll, and um, fell in love with it, and said I can live here. And now I'm living here. <laughs> we are glad to have you, and we're glad that you were able to join us here for Winter Dance Party. Thank you again, and have a good weekend. Thank you, Matt. It's my pleasure. We'll be meeting another family member, this time the son of the famous Bill Haley. That's coming up tonight at 10. Yeah, excited to hear from him. But, of course, we have much more at 6. Here's a hint. We get to see Matt and I dance. I don't know. You'll be the judge to see how well it goes. And you'll send it back to you. <laughs> I can't wait for that. All right, thank you, Matt and Sarah. We're just 20 minutes away from the doors officially opening here, the surf ballroom, and soon this place will be filled with music and a lot of dancing. A lot of <laughs> dancing. We got a chance to see what it's like to dance like it's 1959 this morning when we took dance lessons. <laughs> this is a rock and roll dance. Let's start that from the top. That sounds complicated. <laughs> Seven, eight, side together, side go right. Side together, side, stop. I already messed up. Okay, let's do it one more time. <laughs> side together, side, go right. Three, go left, beat the doors. Go right. Oh, brother, you got that part. <laughs> <laughs> I went way too fast. All right, this is dangerous. There we go. Good job, guys. I almost knocked her over, but I didn't step up. All I have to say about that is I'm not a natural. Yeah. <laughs> I like your moves, Bradley. Oh, yeah. you, got, you got moves. I so. don't know what to do with my arms. You don't. That's, that's true. But I'm no pro either. So <laughs> we hope you got a good chuckle out, out of that at home. We'll see you at the end of the show when we have a last check here at the surf. <laughs> The doors are opening right now. I'm doing my best to fit in. It's going to yes. get hectic in here, Great and it's a big weekend ahead. Yeah, we have lots on the agenda. You can take a look on the screen. Tonight you can hear Lou Chrissy, Bill Haley Jr., and the Comets, Tommy Alsop, and the White Sidewalls. Friday, Big Sandy and his Fly Right Boys, L.A. Party Dolls, and Cadillac Casanovas. Then on Saturday, Frankie Avalon, the Crystals, Brian Highland, Chris Montez, and John Miller's uh, winter dance party. It'll be a blast. We're looking forward to it. We've had a great day and thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching our dance. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give us too much guff for that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back in the studio at 10. We'll see you then.